Explorer X here, ready for some creepy stories? I was a young woman in my early 20s living in a bustling city. One evening, my friends and I decided to go out for a night on the town. We had heard about a new club that had just opened up and we were excited to check it out. We took the train to the downtown area, excited for a fun night out. As we walked to the club, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being followed. I mentioned it to my friends but they brushed it off, thinking I was just being paranoid. We got to the club and the music was blasting, the lights were flashing and the crowd was lively. We had a great time dancing and laughing together. As the night went on, I started to feel increasingly uneasy. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. I kept glancing around the club, trying to find the source of my discomfort but I couldn't see anyone suspicious. I eventually decided to tell my friends how I was feeling and they started to notice too that someone was following us. They saw a man that was always around us and he was looking at us in a strange way. We eventually decided to leave the club and head back to the train station. As we were walking, the man who had been following us appeared out of nowhere and grabbed my arm. My friends immediately reacted and were able to fend the man off while I called the police. The man was arrested and it was later revealed that he had a history of stalking and harassment. It was a terrifying experience and it made me realize the importance of always trusting my instincts and staying aware of my surroundings. It also taught me the importance of having a support system and friends who have your back in any situation. I also learned that it's better to be safe than sorry. And even if it seems paranoid, it's always better to tell someone if you're feeling uncomfortable or uneasy. I was a young professional in my early 30s, working in the tech industry. I had recently been introduced to a new social media app called Connectify that promised to revolutionize the way people connect online. It promised to use advanced algorithms to match users with potential friends and romantic partners based on their interests and preferences. I was excited to try it out and see what all the hype was about. I created my profile and started browsing through the app, connecting with friends and colleagues. I was impressed by the app's sleek design and user-friendly interface. I found myself spending hours on the app, browsing through profiles, and sending messages to potential friends and romantic partners. However, after a few days of using the app, I noticed that my personal information and messages were not private and could be accessed by anyone on the app. I found out that the app's security settings were not as robust as I had thought. My location, browsing history, and messages were visible to anyone who looked at my profile, including advertisers and other businesses. I decided to reach out to the app's customer support team to report the issue. But instead of addressing my concerns, they brushed them off and told me that the app's security was top-notch. I knew something was not right, so I decided to dig deeper. I started researching the app and its creators. I found out that the app's creators had sold user data to third-party companies without consent. My personal information, including my location and messages, were being shared with advertisers and other businesses. I was horrified that my privacy had been violated in such a way. I immediately deleted the app and warned my friends and colleagues about the security risks. I also reported the app to the authorities and urged them to investigate the company's practices. I also contacted a lawyer and tried to file a lawsuit against the company but the company denied all the accusations and they had a powerful legal team, so the case was dismissed. It was a wake-up call for me to always be cautious when it comes to sharing personal information online. I learned that not all apps are created equal and that some companies prioritize profits over user privacy. But despite my efforts, it's unclear whether anything will come out of my efforts, the app continues to be popular, and the company denies any wrongdoing. Here's a bonus before I go to bed, for being such a great audience. It all began one day when I, an avid hiker, decided to explore a secluded trail deep in the forest with a group of friends. We had heard rumors of a hidden gem of a trail that promised breathtaking views and an abundance of wildlife. We were excited for the adventure and set out early in the morning, eager to see what the trail had in store for us. As we made our way deeper into the woods, the trees grew thicker and the sky grew darker. We started to hear strange noises and rustling coming from the bushes, but we shrugged it off as just the sounds of the forest. 
However, as we reached a clearing, we stumbled upon an old, abandoned mansion. The windows were boarded up and the door was locked, but we couldn't resist the urge to explore. We managed to find an unlocked window and climbed inside. The mansion was musty and cobweb-filled, but as we walked through the rooms, we discovered that it was still furnished and it seemed like it had been abandoned recently. We found strange markings on the walls and strange equipment in some of the rooms, but we couldn't quite make sense of it. As we were exploring, we heard strange noises coming from upstairs. We thought it was just the wind and animals, but as we were about to leave, we were confronted by the owner of the mansion, an old man who was suffering from dementia. He was confused and thought we were intruders. He called the police and we were questioned by the police. After verifying our story, the police let us go, but the experience left us shaken and scared. Instead of leaving the mansion and the trail, we were curious and decided to investigate more. We found a hidden room in the basement. It was a laboratory where the old man was conducting twisted experiments. We were horrified and couldn't believe what we were seeing. We wanted to leave but the old man captured us and locked us up in cells. We were subjected to unspeakable horrors, and it became clear that we would not make it out alive. Somehow, I managed to escape, and I ran for my life, never looking back until I was out of the woods. I never spoke of that traumatic experience to anyone and I still have nightmares of that mansion and the old man. I never reported it to the authorities and I never went back to that trail again. I couldn't shake off the feeling that I should have known better, I should have listened to my gut and not be so curious. But I guess it's too late for that now. If you want your story added, email me at explorerxstories at mail.com. Thank you my friends stay safe. Explorer X out.